Welcome to a deep dive on something we see every single day, but probably don't think too much about, logos. We got a really fascinating batch of articles on the subject. Yeah, definitely fascinating stuff. Like seriously, prepping for this deep dive totally changed how I see every logo I pass by and I'm seeing them everywhere now, huh? I can imagine. It really makes you appreciate the strategy and creativity that goes into even the simplest looking logo, right? Absolutely. It's like there are tiny pieces of art with a whole lot writing on them. Totally. They're the face of the brand, the first impression, and they can make or break a company. Okay, <laughs> so let's dive into, well, the different types of logos out there. One of the articles, the different types of logo design, breaks it all down. Yeah, that's a great place to start. So they start with these things called word marks. Right, which is basically when the logo is just the company's name. Yeah styled in a specific way like the first one that pops into my head is disney that iconic script you know it's disney instantly exactly and that's what makes a good word mark so effective it's memorable easy to read and it becomes synonymous with the brand but then the article mentions letter marks which at first i was like isn't that the same thing it's similar but instead of the full name it's just the initials or a shortened version <laughs> think hbo ibm CNN. Oh, okay. That makes sense. It's a smart strategy, mm -hmm. especially for companies with long or complicated names. It's all about simplification and making it easy for people to remember. So it's like less is more. Exactly. And then you've got pictorial marks, which are all about the visuals. No text, just a symbol. Like the Apple logo mm. or the Target bullseye. Exactly. The article calls them symbols or brand marks which emphasizes that they're meant to represent the essence of the brand through a visual metaphor. I always thought the Apple logo was kind of random, but now that I think about it, that Apple with the bite taken out of it, it's kind of brilliant, right? It really is. It's simple, recognizable, and it has that subtle connection to knowledge and discovery. But, and the article makes this point too, pictorial marks can be tricky if your business changes direction. Oh, I see what you mean. Like if Apple suddenly started making cars or something. Exactly. You're kind of stuck with that Apple. But then some companies do a great job of evolving their symbol over time. Like who? Like Starbucks. They've kept the iconic siren, but they've simplified it over the years, making it more modern and versatile. It's still recognizable as Starbucks. And then there are the logos that combine the name with a symbol, right? Like Nike. Yep. Those are combination marks. You get the visual impact of a symbol, but with the clarity of the brand name right there. Which is probably smart, especially when you're first starting out and people don't automatically know what your symbol means. Exactly. They're very versatile and adaptable. Then there's a more traditional style that's been making a comeback lately. Emblems. Emblems. Yeah, they have that classic, often circular design where the name is encased within the design. Oh, like those old school crests or like... Harley Davidson motorcycle. You got it. Starbucks is technically an emblem too. And a lot of universities use that style. It conveys a sense of history, legacy, and even authority. Now that you mention it, I'm seeing them everywhere. Craft breweries seem to love them too. Exactly. It's that connection to heritage, to craftsmanship and tradition that emblems convey so well. It's subtle, but it's definitely a trend. And you know what's really interesting? There's this whole other layer to logo design. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's not just about the type of logo you choose. It's about the psychology behind it. Oh, like color schemes and stuff. I was skimming this article about that. Exactly. Colors, shapes, fonts, they all tap into our subconscious and evoke certain feelings. Wow. That's kind of wild. Right. Like, think about the color green. What comes to mind? Uh, trees, money, recycling. I don't know. It depends. Exactly. It can represent nature, growth, freshness, but also wealth, stability. Mm -hmm. So if you're choosing green for your logo, you're tapping into all those associations. So basically every color choice is loaded. Pretty much. And then you've got shapes. Circles tend to convey community, warmth, while squares and rectangles often feel more stable, reliable. That makes sense. Like I've always thought of tech companies as using a lot of blue. And now that I think about it, blue does have that kind of trustworthy, reliable vibe. Exactly. And blue can also represent communication, intelligence, all things tech companies want to be associated with. Right? Okay, so let's say I'm starting a new tech company and I want to project both innovation and de-trustworthiness. What do I go for? Well, that's where it gets really interesting because you've got to find that balance. Maybe a combination mark with a circular element and a clean modern font. It's about combining those visual cues in a way that feels both cutting edge and dependable. Okay. That makes sense. But this is already making my head spin a little. And it goes even deeper than that. The article on the golden ratio in logo design blew my mind. The what now? The golden ratio. 
It's this mathematical ratio. You find it everywhere in nature, and it's been used in art and design for centuries. Da Vinci, the pyramids, it's all about achieving these visually harmonious proportions. Okay, I vaguely remember learning about this in, like, high school math class. Right. But some logo designers swear by it. They say that using the golden ratio makes a logo naturally more pleasing to the eye. Whether or not it's totally subconscious, who knows, but it's fascinating to think about. So like the Apple logo or something, maybe that's secretly using the golden ratio. It's possible. A lot of famous logos have been analyzed, and sure enough, they often align with the golden ratio. Coincidence? Maybe. But it makes you wonder, right? Totally. It's like it... there's this whole secret language of design that I never even knew existed. Exactly. And that's what makes this so fascinating. We're surrounded by these visual messages every day. And they're all subtly influencing us on the subconscious level. Okay, so we've talked about all these different types of logos, the psychology behind colors and shapes, this crazy golden ratio thing. It's a lot. But for someone who's like thinking about their own business's branding or even just trying to understand why some logos are so iconic, what are the big takeaways? What should we remember? I think the biggest takeaway is that a logo is so much more than just a pretty picture. It's got to tell a story. It has to connect with people emotionally. And it has to be strategic. You have to really put thought into it. Absolutely. And I think one of the best ways to understand this is to look at how logos have evolved over time. Like, remember that old Apple logo? The one with the apple tree and Isaac Newton? Yes. Beautiful illustration, but way too complicated to work as a logo. Over time, they simplified, refined, and they ended up with that iconic apple we know today. It's true. You never see that original logo anywhere. And I think that evolution speaks volumes about what makes a logo truly successful. It's like they chipped away everything that wasn't essential, you know, yeah. until they got to like the core, the heart of what Apple's all about. You got it. It's about recognizing what really matters and then having the guts to strip away the rest. And isn't that true for so much of design in general? It's essential. Whether you're talking logos, websites, product design, it's about clarity simplicity, and communicating your message in the most impactful way possible. Which I guess is easier said than done most of the time, right? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of work to make something look effortless. Yeah. But that's what separates the good from the truly great. I'm thinking about all those logos we see every single day on our phones, on billboards, on our coffee cups, and how much thought actually goes into each one. Right. And it really makes you look at them differently, doesn't it? Totally. It's like, I'm never going to look at a swoosh or an apple or a mermaid the same way again. And that's what I love about design. It's all around us. It shapes our experiences in ways we might not even realize. It's like a secret language everyone understands, but not everyone speaks. I like that. A secret language. And the more you learn about it, the more you start to see those messages, those stories, hidden in plain sight. Well, you've definitely given us a whole new way of seeing the world. So next time you're grabbing a coffee or scrolling through your phone, take a second to appreciate the logos around you. Yeah, take a closer look. They might just surprise you. That's it for today's deep dive, everyone. Thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time for another deep dive into a topic we think you'll find fascinating. See you then.